Okay, so we're in journal 11 here, and I brought up this problem here where you're evaluating a function um, given a certain x value. So here is your function. This f symbol here is just representing an equation. This is the equation. Um, and f here just represents that this is a function. Um, and then you have your x inside the parentheses. This is just saying you got to plug in, plug in x value, some sort of x value that you're plugging into, oops, my bad, that you're plugging into this function here. So in this case, I have two problems that are structured a little bit differently, but it's the same, uh, you're doing the same things here. So this one says in part A that x equals 4, and you have to find what value does the function give you when x equals 4. So if this is your x value, all you're doing is plugging this 4 into this function here. And then so that means that the 4 also goes on this side, and you're going to work out everything on the right side so you know what that function equals. So let me show you by setting this problem up for you. So f in parentheses will be the 4 because that's what my x value is. And then I'm going to plug in 4 into that x minus 3. So notice how I've just plugged in this 4 into this x. And I'm just going to work out this side here. Okay? Just the right hand side. So when I'm working this out, 2 times 4 is 8. Minus 3 is 5. And so in this case, when f, uh, I'm sorry, when x is 4, the function uh, the function's output is 5, and that's it, okay? So here's the thing what I notice beginners when they see a problem like this, f4. They bring this down, so don't do this. I'm just going to do this as a bad example. But they bring the f4 down, and then they're like, oh, this is in parentheses, right? So we want to get the f by itself, and then they start dividing the 4 over, thinking that this here is 5 over 4. But that is not what we do here. The reason why is because this f is not a variable. The f is not a variable. Okay, The f is a mathematical notation to say that this is some sort of function, and you need to plug in this value for x. This is what it's trying to say. And so we don't do this at all. Okay, So let me just go ahead and erase that. So what you're doing here is you're going to plug in, oops, my bad, you're going to plug in your x value that they give you. So in our case, our x value here was 4. We plugged it in, we worked it out, and so our output gave us 5, and we're done. So same thing with this here. This is not saying that f is multiplied by negative 5. What this is saying is that if, f, if our x here is negative 5, we have to plug that in for x. So we're going to set this up here. And so that would be 2 times negative 5 minus 3. 2 times negative 5 is negative 10 minus 3 is negative 13. And so now I just have negative 13 as my output or my answer. Okay? So what we're trying to do is, like, if I give you some sort of input like x, can you tell me what the output is by plugging into the function and getting a value? So um, just as a quick reminder here, if you guys never seen a function with an f, um, f of x, you can think of it as, so f of x, I'll just use this example, f of x 2x plus 1, is the same as if I were to say y equals 2x plus 1. Okay, So you can treat, in a way, this f of x as if it was your y. So if you have the x value, what is going to be your like y value or your f of x value. So um, that's it for the bell work here. We are going to practice a lot with these types of symbols with the f of x, so that's why we needed to go over that in our bell work. So let's go on to our next slide here. Okay, so we're going to talk a little bit of something called piecewise functions. Piecewise functions are really cool. So it says here, piecewise function is a function that is made of two or more equations. Think of it this way. It's as if you have one equation, a piece of one equation, and then you get another piece of one equation, and then you stick them together, 
And that's a piecewise function. Basically, piecewise functions are your Frankenstein of a function, okay? So it's like chopping off a function and then chopping off another function and putting them together, and voila, you have another function that's made of both of them. And sometimes you can have three or four, however many you want. But the thing is, if you have multiple functions inside of a, of a piecewise function, right? The input of the x value determines which equation you use. What that means is if you have multiple functions, you can't just be plugging your x into all of the functions. Um, instead, you'll actually pick a function to plug in your x. And I'll show you what I mean in the next slide here. Okay, so let's start off with an example of a piecewise function. So here's a piecewise function, okay? And you can see here that there are two levels, two lines. So this one is representing a function, and this one's representing a function. So for now, I'm going to ignore this side for a sec. I'll talk about these intervals later, but I just want us to focus on this side. So this side is saying that f of x is equal to x plus 1. So it's like, oh... I have an equation that's equal to x plus 1, and I have an equation that equals, well, that lower half, so the 4. So it equals 4. So I have two equations. Now, the thing is, if I have a piecewise function, I don't want to write f of x every time that I have another equation stuck inside a piecewise function. I just want to write f of x one time. So that's why you see this as... Uh, just this side here being written inside the braces, okay? It's because we don't want to rewrite things several times if we just know that they're both coming from f of x. So um, now let's talk about, like, how do we use these equations here, given that we have the x value, the input. So part A is saying that I have f negative 3, right? So x here remember, is the thing that's inside the parentheses, but I have to figure out which equation to use so that I can plug in my negative 3 into the equation. So here's what we do. We need to look at the interval side. So I'm going to split this in half here. This side here, notice how it's an interval, right? So we have the interval notation or the inequality notation. So what we have to do is basically choose what x value um, satisfies this, uh, which interval satisfies this x value. So this x is negative 3. So take a look at the first equation here. So this is the first equation. This is the second equation. So the first equation says that x is less than or equal to 1. Well, turns out our negative 3 is um, less than or equal to negative 1, right? So in that word, and that means that we can use this, this negative 3 to plug into the first equation. So what I can do is that I can use the first equation and plug in my negative 3. So that's what I'm going to do. Plug in my negative 3 plus 1. So I plug this value into here add that 1, this is going to give me negative 2. And so that there is my output. Okay, let me just kind of go over that real quick. So the first thing you'll do is take your x value and you will determine which interval um, satisfies this x value. Okay, so this negative 3 satisfied the first interval because the second interval says that x has to be greater than 1. Well, hold up, negative 3 is definitely not greater than 1, so I can't use the second equation. I have to use the first because x in this case is definitely smaller than 1. So that's why I used the first equation, plugged in my x, got my f value. Now I'm going to try the second one here. So this time my x is a 7, so if I have a 7, that's bigger than 1, right? So if it's bigger than 1, then I have to use the second equation here. So my second equation says that, well, looking at this, just says 4. There's no x value here where I can plug in my 7, right? So the answer here is just going to be 4. In other words, any time you just have a number as your equation, right? So this side here is our function. 
that where we can plug in x values in, but this one's just a constant. It doesn't have an x next to it. So that means that every time, like whatever your x value is bigger than 1, your answer will always be 4. In other words, the output will always be 4. So that's why the answer here is 4. Take a look at part C. See if you can figure out what equation you would use for that one. Okay, so for C here, you have 1, right? So 1 is on both of these interval, but here's the thing. X has to equal 1. So that means that we have to choose the first interval because this interval says that X can equal 1, whereas the one below it doesn't say it can equal that way. So in that case, I plug this one into the first function. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And I get my answer to be 2. 1 plus 1 gives me 2. And so that there is my x value. Oh, I guess I forgot to box in this one. And that's it. So now that we've gotten a taste of how to do these problems here, let's go ahead into our next example and try that one out. OK, so in this function here, again, we have two functions, 1, 2. And we said in the last slide that this side here is our function or like your equation. And this side here is like your interval or your like condition statement. Meaning that if you can't determine what function to use until you know which x value satisfies which interval. Okay, so like this one here, the x value here is 4. So if you go to the first interval, 4 is not less than negative 2. So this says x is less than negative 2. This 4 is greater than negative 2. So in that case, the second interval satisfies this condition. 4 is definitely greater than negative 2. So that's why I'm going to choose the second equation to work with. So um, I like to put a little note on the top of it saying like which equation I use. It just helps me, reminds me which equation that I'm plugging my x into. You don't have to do this part, by the way. Okay, so if I'm plugging things in here, I have 1 half, I'm going to be plugging in 4 into that x plus 1. If I work this out, um, I can think of this as a fraction and this is not a fraction, so I can put that as a, over 1 and make it into a fraction, right? And then I would multiply the fraction, so when you multiply fractions, you multiply straight across. So 1 times 4 is 4. 2 times 1 in the bottom is 2 plus 1. If you work this out, 4 over 2, just think of that as division when you have a fraction, is 2. 2 plus 1 is 3. And there we have our output for f of 4. All right, let's try out b here. b here is a negative 2. So the interval that says that x can be equal to negative 2 is the second one here. So we have to go ahead and use that second equation again. So if I'm setting this up here, 1 half, negative 2 plus 1. If I'm working this out, remember I can put this over 1. And if I multiply this straight across, 1 times negative 2 is negative 2 over 2 times 1, which is 2 plus 1. Negative 2 divided by negative 2, if you were to reduce this fraction here, is just negative 1 plus 1 which is 0. So my output here is 0. And then my last one here is, let's see, this here is a negative 5. Negative 5 is smaller, smaller than negative 2, so I have to use the first equation. So if I use the first equation, that's going to look like 3 times negative 5 plus 2, and then just working it out, right, because I'm just plugging this Negative 5 and for this x, if you multiply this out, that's negative 5 or negative 15 plus 2, which is negative 13. And that's your output for that one. All right, so I think we've gotten a good practice on how to use piecewise functions. So now we're going to learn how to graph in the next slide. So like I said, piecewise functions first make the judgment of how many equations do you have. So in this case, 2. Then remember that this side where it has the intervals um, lets you decide what x values to plug 
uh, which x values that uh, can work so that way you can choose what functions to use so you can plug in your x. Okay, so you can't plug into both equations. You have to choose one of the equations to plug it in for. Okay, next slide. All right, so graphing a piecewise function. So first, what I notice is that I have two equations. I'm gonna start there by just separate them. Now, I'm gonna be doing this in color because it helps me to see which uh, functions that I am going to be working with. And so um, it just makes it a little bit easier to draw and tell which one's which. You don't have to do it in two different colors. I thought I'd do it this way so that way you can kind of keep track of which one I'm doing. So what I like to do when I'm graphing this is actually make a table. Now I could graph this without making a table. What that would look like is, remember we said that on this side here, um, f of x is basically your y, right? And these are your functions. So you can really think of this as like, y equals 5 and y equals negative 2x plus 5 and just graphing these two functions but here's the thing you can only graph them based off of that interval so if it does if it's not in that interval you have to erase off uh, that line which is a little bit confusing for students to do so what I try to do to teach this is I teach kids how to make a table to allow them to have more precision when they plot the points. So I'm going to demonstrate what I mean by that. So I'm going to make a table. And remember, when we make a table, we have x's and y's. And because I have two, two equations, I'm going to split this into two sections here. What I'm going to do is the first equation will be in this section. The second equation will be in this section here. And so if I want to get my x values to plot my points for the um, line, so because I'm graphing this, you guys remember that if I want to graph a line, I need two points. So I need two x values here to make that work. So to, make, to find my x values, I actually have to look at the side where it has the x's the interval. So this side, I'm going to grab my x values, where the intervals are. On this side, if I get my x value, I can plug that in to find my y values. So based off of this side, what I'm going to do is I need one, two x values. So I'm going to grab the x value that's already here, that 2. So I'm going to grab that and put that down. Now, here's the thing. I, I'm going to be drawing this on the graph, so because this here is less than but not equal to, I'm going to need to graph it with a open circle. This is going to sound really weird, but I'll explain it later. But I need an open circle here next to that too when I graph it. And then I need another x value, right? So what I have to do, because there's only one number that they gave me, I have to choose a number where x is smaller than 2. So uh, x is smaller than 2 is like 1 or 0 or negative 1. And you can pick any number you want. So I'm going to pick 0. The reason why I like to pick 0 is because if I had to plug in 0 into an equation, 0 is so easy to plug in because it just, you know, makes things go away. If you multiply anything with 0, it's 0. So I'm going to choose 0. And then to the side here, I'm going to point an arrow towards the zero. The reason why you want to point an arrow is, let's just take a small moment and graph this interval here on a number line. So I'm graphing x is less than 2. If you were to graph that on an interval line, you would need an open circle. And then you would probably shade, if it's less than uh, 2, you would shade to the left, right, with an arrow. Notice how when you're shading to the left, zero is on the left as well, right? And so notice how the arrow here is pointing towards the zero and not the other way. So that's why I have an arrow pointing down towards the zero. It's because of the number line. So now I'm gonna get rid of this. Okay, so I have my x value for the first one here. Now I'm gonna try to get the x value for the second equation. So again, they give you already um, an an endpoint to use, so I'm going to use that 2 here. But this time around, I need a closed circle because that of inequality. And now I need to pick a second 
x value and x is greater than or equal to 2. So I'm going to choose a number greater than 2, which may be like 3 or something, right? Um, I, here's my tip. I try not to pick a number that I'm going to be using to be torturous when I plug in. So 3 is a small number and easy to plug in. You could have picked 10, you could have picked 100. Those are all numbers bigger than 2, but do you want to torture yourself? No. So don't do it. I mean, you can, but remember, you have to graph it later. All right, so on this here, we've already found our x values. To find the y values, all we have to do is plug in those x values into the corresponding equation. So this here's our first equation. Notice how, that, how our first equation doesn't have any x values. Well, we explained before, if there are no x values present, then that means that, is your, that number is your output. So I'm going to have to write a 5 here and a 5 here. So we have both of our outputs being 5, and I'm done. Those are kind of nice because, you know, when you have constants, that's always going to be your answer. And then the second one here, I do need to plug it into that x, so let me just set it up. So I have negative 2 times 2 plus 5. I can do this all this work to the side and then bring the number over here, but I, I don't know. For me, I have room here, so I'm just going to work it out here. And then I'm going to plug in the, the 3 into the same equation and work that out. So if you work out the first one, negative 2 times 2 is negative 4 plus 5. That's a positive 1. If you take negative 2 times 3, that's negative 6 plus 1. That's um, also a, no, that would be a negative 1. Yeah, that would be a negative 1. Okay. So I have all my y values and I have all my x values. So remember, these tables show us coordinate points because we have an x and we have a y value. So I'm going to grab my green marker here. And we're going to go ahead and go to the graph and plot 2, 5. So 2, 5 is right here. And at this point, notice how I need an open circle for 2, 5. So I'm going to make sure I have an open circle right here. And then I have 0, 5. So 0, 5 is right here. And I'm going to just plot a little point and then connect the dots. But here's the thing. Notice how at 0, 5, there's an arrow. I need to shoot an arrow this way. Okay. So um, I just want to pause to take a minute to appreciate this graph right here that we've just done. This graph here, um, because of the arrow, this means that it can extend on and on forever, this line. Notice how this line is a horizontal line, right? Isn't y equals 5 also a horizontal line, right? y equals 5. Yeah, if we were to graph that, we would have graphed a horizontal line uh, e uh, the same way. The only difference is here is it has to exist um, x on x values that are less than 2. Notice how this arrow only points from 2 to negative infinity. It doesn't point over here because that's not where it exists. Okay, so the table allows us to be more precise at where we're plotting these graphs. So now let's try number two and see if it looks very similar to what this equation would be on its own. So we have 2, 1. So 2, 1 is here, and I need a closed circle. And then I need 3, negative 1, which is down here. And then I'm going to connect the dots and put an arrow at the 3, negative 1. And when I do that, notice how this line here, if you were to extend it, it's a negative slope. It looks like it's decreasing, right? Notice how this equation here would be y equals negative 2x plus y. And notice how that has a negative 2 as a slope, right? And... It, is, it does look like that on the graph here. And so, like I said, this table here um, is just to help you be more precise when you're drawing everything on the graph because it's really hard to do uh, just to freehand it. Um, but it is possible, but I just find that the, the table does help a lot of beginners out. 
All right, I know that one was a long problem, but I just wanted to explain it so that way you guys understand how to do graphing. So in the next two slides, I will do a couple more graphing problems so that way you get used to it. Okay, so um, we're gonna take this now piecewise function and we're gonna graph it, it on our uh, coordinate system. So remember, there are two equations here, so I'm gonna make a table and maybe make this one pink, this one green. So when you're making your table, you have your x's and y values. I'm gonna split this in two since I have two equations. And remember, if we want these x values here, we want to go on the interval side to grab the x values. So I like to always split these up as like my x's and my y's. And then if I wanna get an x value, remember you need two x values or two points to make uh, a line on a graph. So in this case, you can always take the interval and take the number that they already have. So that's one of the endpoints that I can steal. And this interval has it with an inequality without a line, so I need an open circle next to the two, the negative two. And then I need another x value, so I go to my interval and I think, okay, x needs to be smaller than negative 2. A number that's smaller than negative 2 is like negative 3, right? And then we point an arrow towards the negative 3 because the x values are going to get more negative, so you want to point in the negative direction. Okay, now I'm going to try to find the second equation here. Let me grab my, pink, uh, my green pen. So... This x here, the interval, starts at negative 2 as well, but it needs a closed circle because of that equal sign right there. And then if I want my second x value, let's think about it. x needs to be greater than or equal to negative 2. So a number that's greater than negative 2 is like negative 1, maybe even 0, or 1, or positive 10. So out of those numbers, I think I'm going to choose 0. Right, because zero is just easier to plug in. And I can already foreshadow that if I were to plug in zero into this x, I'm gonna make that fraction go away when I multiply. So I'm gonna keep and uh, keep the zero to use, and then I'm gonna point an arrow. Um, so now I need to find my y values here. So to find my y values, all I gotta do is plug in my x values into the corresponding equation. So this is my first equation, so I'm gonna plug this negative two in for this x and set that up here. So that's gonna be three times negative two plus two, ooh, close circle, plus two. And then I'm gonna take the other negative three, plug that into the equation. So three times negative three plus two. And then I'm just gonna work these two out. So go ahead and work them out and see what values you get. I'm gonna do that here as well. So three times negative two is negative six, plus two is negative four. Negative three times three gives me negative nine, plus two is negative seven. So hopefully you got those numbers there. Okay, this one here, I'm now gonna be plugging into the second equation. So just be careful of that. So that's gonna be like one half times negative two plus one and one half plug in zero plus one and then working it out. So half times negative two, remember you can put things over fractions, and then you would multiply one times negative two and two times one. And so that would be negative two over two, which is negative one plus one is zero. And then one half times zero gives you zero, plus one is just positive one. So I did that really fast, but feel free to work that out to the side if you need to, and then bring back your number. So now that I have the x values and the y values, remember that these values here are your coordinates. And so when you go to that point, you need a plot based off your symbol that you have to the side. So this here is a negative 2 on the x down 4. So right there, I need an open circle. And then I have negative 3, negative 7. So I'm going to extend this coordinate system because it's going to go down to negative 7. All right, so negative three down seven is about right there. So grabbing my pen, put a little dot, and then connect the dots and put an arrow at the second point here. Negative three, negative seven, seven will need an arrow. And so just take a moment to appreciate this line here. 
if you were to extend this line, right, extending it the other way, notice how this slope here would be a positive slope, right? And notice how this line here is a positive slope of 3, and it shows up on the graph. Now we're going to graph the second line here, and I also notice that this is a positive line or a positive slope. So I'm going to graph my points and see if that's the case. So negative 2, 0, negative 2, 0 is right there. And I need a closed circle, oh, sorry, green, closed circle there. And then I have 0, 1, 0, 1 is right here. And then I'm going to point an arrow in that direction. So not only do I notice that this is a positive slope as I extend this, but I also already notice that the slope here is um, one, rise over 1 over 2, right? So up 1 over 2, and it shows that here when I plot the points. So there's my graph, um, and so that's how we graph when there are two equations. So in the next slide here, we're going to graph when there are three equations. But it's really not that much more difficult because that would just be adding another third section to your table that you would have to plot on the graph. So it's really nothing new that you've learned. Um, we're just going to do a third equation uh, to plot. Okay, so on here, I'm going to label my three equations. So I have one, two, and three. And remember that these here are our x values. These are going to be our y values that we're going to plug in. And so I'm going to create my table, but this time my table needs to have three sections. And so there we go. So for my first equation here, remember, I need to grab my x, uh, x value. So looking at this here, I'm going to take that negative 4 because that's one of the endpoints I'm working with. So negative 4, I need an open circle next to that negative 4 because there's no line here. And now taking a look to figure out my x value, my next x value, x needs to be less than negative 4. So a number that's less than negative 4 could be like negative 5, right? I don't want a really big negative number um, because in this case I don't want to deal with big negative numbers because I have to plug it in or like graph it. So I'm going to just choose negative 5 and remember we point an arrow towards, uh, we point an arrow down and this will just help us graph it later. I'm going to do number 3 next, and then I'll come back to number 2. So if I were to try to find the third equation's x value, I would need the 5 with an open circle, because there's no line. And then it says x is greater than 5. So if x is greater than 5, that could be like a number like 6, and then I would point an arrow down. Okay, now let's take a look at the middle equation. So the middle equation has two x values. You have a negative 1 and a 3. So we have um, already two values that they gave us, right? So in this case, I can just use those two values. I don't have to guess a, I don't have to choose a x values. They already give me two. So that's kind of nice. But for both of these, notice how there's a line for both of the inequalities. So I will need a closed circle. Oh, sorry, I should be doing that in pink. My bad. I will need a closed circle for both of these numbers. And then when I connect a dot, notice how I create like a line segment. Well, that's because when you were to graph this on a number line, let's just quickly graph that on a number line, right? If you were to graph negative 1 and 3 with a closed circle on both of them, and I would ask you, where do you shade if, this is, if the x is between negative 1 and negative 3? You would probably say in the middle, right? In the middle here. And notice how when you do that, you also create this like line segment image. And notice how we're drawing a line segment here on a coordinate system later. So I just wanted to point that out, that a lot of the stuff that we learned are still applicable to um, what we're doing today. So now what we're going to do is find our y values. So starting with the first equation that's in green, um, if I go to the first equation, notice how there's not an x. So that's kind of nice. That means that for any given x value that I de uh, decide to have, it's, the answer will always be negative 2. So in this case, I'm just going to take that negative 2 and write that down for my y value. So any x that's less than negative 4, the output will always be negative 2. But the next equation, I do have an x that I need to plug in. So I'm going to plug in these uh, x values into here and calculate my y value. So if I plug in 3, I get 3 
uh, 3 minus 3. And if I plug in negative 1, I have to subtract that by 3. So if I work this out, I get 0 and negative 4 as my y values. And then last but not least, I have 5 and 6 for the third equation that I'm going to plug into the third equation and work that out. So 3 times 5 minus five, uh, 15, 3 times 6 minus 15. If I work it out, 3 times 5 is 15, minus 15 is 0. Second equation is 3 times 6 is 18, minus 15 is 3. So now I have my... Um, all my y values and my x values, so I'm ready to plot. So starting with these two, negative 4 down 2, so right there I need an open circle, and then I need to go to negative 5 to make a little point there. When I connect the dots, I'll need an arrow at that negative 5, negative 2. And so notice how this portion here is like a horizontal line? Well, that right there is y equals negative 2, that's also a horizontal horizontal line at negative 2, so that shows up on our graph here. Now our next one here is 3, 0, so 3, 0 is right here. I'm going to grab my pink pen, and I need a closed circle there. I also have negative 1, negative 4, so negative 1, negative 4 is down here with a closed circle. And I'm going to connect the dots. Notice how this slope here is increasing, so it's the slope is positive. And notice how this here, the second equation, the slope is a positive 1 or a positive slope. So it also reflects that on the graph here. In our last equation, um, we have 5, 0. So 5, 0 is right there with an open circle. And then we have 6, 3, which is right here. I'm going to connect the dots and point an arrow that way. And I notice that this is a positive slope, but so is this equation. It's a positive 3 as my slope. And so I've graphed everything on this piecewise function. And we're done. Okay, I know this was really long, but it was really important that you got that practice in. That's why we spent two days on this journal. All right, that's it, folks.